Hello guys, and I am back once again with another video. <laughs> Let's continue where we left off in the design patterns, creational design patterns. And the first one in our list would be the builder pattern. What is the builder pattern? Well, as the name suggests, it is a design pattern that lets you build in, um, different kinds of representations of something or of an item without having to worry about what type of item this will be because the construction process will always be the same but of course it will depend on what kind of item that we want but the construction is the same okay so let's see the description here i hope that makes uh, that made sense here we go it lets you construct complex objects step by step or objects that require more configuration for example the pattern allows you to produce different types and representations of an object using the same construction code. There we go. So we all have the same like um, process for processes, but the outcome would be different based on whatever we want it to be. Okay, let's see the problem that is given to us by um, the factoring guru. Imagine a complex object that requires laborious step-by-step -step initial initialization of many fields and nested objects. Such initialization code is usually buried inside the monstrous constructor with lots of parameters, or even worse, scattered all over the client code. Yes, this is how I usually do it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> when I try to like make some kind of, let's say, um, settings or something. <laughs> anyway, let's see the illustration. So for example, we have a house and we want to construct it. And most of them, there will be different kinds of, or different types of houses. There will be houses with a garage, houses with a swimming pool, houses with a fancy statue, or houses with a garden. Now, if we don't use the builder pattern, then inside of a class, we would need to actually add all of these properties inside of this class, which is the house. Okay, I actually forgot to show the cursor. So all of this, for example, um is with garage, property, is with statue, property, is with swimming pool, property, is with garden, property, will all be inside of the house class. And that can get pretty um, cluttered and messy very, very quickly. Okay, so for example, the one we have on the left, which is my code editor, let's see. So I have an editor here, and I just have, or rather, I have a root, and that root is based, or is for, an editor builder and let's take the example that we have right we're in we want to have different kinds of houses and in this case on the left we want to have different kinds of an editor one wherein we want to have a plain text i guess and another with a rich text and another with some kind of a plugin now we don't want to actually every time we make a new editor we don't want to add like some kind of a lot of parameters whenever we call, for example, new editor. So if I just try that, I will like say is rich text, plugin for types, and a second plugin. And this will get pretty messy very quickly. And one one um, solution I guess is to like just pass an object and that will contain the properties. But again, we will be containing all of this just in one class. We're in here, we can just tell um, the root that we would create every time we build a new it a new editor that oh okay we want to add a rich text plugin to it so we'll just declare that the rich text is true and so on and so forth okay and here is just to show that we are actually adding it over here so very simple and here what what does this mean? Well, it's saying that, okay, we want to get a reference to this um, root now, or in this case, the editor, because it's pretty much the root. <laughs> it will contain the plugins and such, for example. And since this is a builder, every time we call this, that means the user or developer wants to build an editor. So, of course, we don't want to give them the old instance of the editor, or in this case, the root. So that's why we want to reset it every time this gets called. Okay, so that, so that when the developer 
after calling this wants to build a new one, then we would get a new one. Okay? So here, the reset pretty much means that the root instance for this specific class, which is what will get, which is what is going to be returned in the getRoot method, will be a new one. Here. So in this constructor, it's just pretty much to avoid the type error. If I do this, we will get the type error. So yeah. Since we're calling, since we can all we can also call reset here anyway. But there's a type error, so yeah. I should do it this way. Of course, the reset can be more than just um doing like this. Maybe we can do um cleanup functions and such inside the reset if need be. And in this case, we don't really need to have a function method for this because it's only one line, so we can do like copy paste this or move this down here but that's not really good practice so yeah okay and so let's move on to the code on or the texts on the website okay let's see for example let's think about how to create a house object to build a simple house you need to construct four walls and a floor install a door so basically building a house Excuse me, but what if you want something bigger, something more ambitious? One with backyards and other goodies? Well, the simple solution is to have a new class and with that class extend the base class, which is the house. So for example, on the left, we have an editor, right? So we can say that the base editor will be a plain text editor. And that plain text editor would be extended by, let's say, if a user wants a rich text, We'll just extend the plain text. Brain like this will have the functions of a plain text, like being able to type something in an editor and remove texts and highlighting the text and such. Okay. But of course, if you add more plugins, more and more and more, and for example, you add a new plugin to the rich text, then you would need to extend the rich text now, wouldn't you? So that is what's being said here, and create a set of subclasses to cover all combinations of the parameters. But eventually, you'll end up with a considerable amount of subclasses. And a new parameter, such as the porch tile, will require growing this hierarchy even more. So there we go. So if we, don't, if we want the plain text to have another plugin, there will be extends. And if that other plugin will, we want it to have a rich text and extend again, and vice, vice versa. <laughs> okay. So anyway, let's continue. There's another approach that doesn't involve creating new subclasses. You can create a giant constructor right in the base house class, which is what um, I have discussed earlier in here, passing the properties inside here, or the yeah properties, <coughs> with all possible parameters that control the house object. Okay. Well, this approach indeed eliminates the need for subclasses because we'll just implement or add them here. It creates another problem, as what is um, shown in the illustration below. We have a house class that accepts these parameters here when we construct it. Yeah, do we want windows, doors, rooms? Uh, do we want it to have a garage and such? And now if we call this new house or if we construct a new house object, then we would need to do something like this in the illustration. But if we don't want a garage and such, It'll pass in no, 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 so on and so forth. And this will be unused, which will um, look messy very quickly in a large application. In most cases, most of the parameters will be unused, making the constructor calls pretty ugly. Mm -hmm. For instance, only a fraction of houses have swimming pools. So the parameters related to swimming pools will be useless 9 times out of 10, depending on how... How wanted are is uh, how wanted swimming pools are. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the solution for the problem that we that was discussed. The builder pattern suggests that you extract the object construction code out of its class and move it to separate objects called builders. So that would be we want to build a wall and that's would that will be or that would be a method and doors, windows, and such. And if you want a garage, we'll, we can also say that build garage. Okay. The pattern organizes object construction into a set of steps. To create an object, you execute a series of these steps on a builder object or builder object. 
The important part is that you don't need to call all of the steps. You can call only those steps that are necessary for producing a particular configuration of an object. There we go. So this is the beauty. And again, this is uh, like if you need a small, um, something small, then you don't really need to do this. But the beauty here is that you can have um, the, what do you call this? The leisure, I guess, to decide what you want to build. So if you want to add a wall to your house, then you will just need to call build walls. And if you want to have a door, just call this after building the walls or such. And if you want to crush them, just call this, depending on your choice. Okay. <clears throat> Let's continue. Some of the construction steps might require different implementation when you need to build various representations of the product. There we go. For example, walls of a walls of a cabin may be built out of wood, but the castle walls must be built with stone. So, for example, in the build walls, this can accept a parameter. Do we want it to have um stones or woods? And depending on that, that will be what the process that will occur inside the build walls uh, build walls method. Okay. In this case, you can create several different builder classes that implement the same set of building steps. There we go, but in a different manner. Then you can use these builders in the construction process and order set of poles to the building steps to produce different kinds of objects. So let's say we have different kinds of builders and for example, building a castle, building a, a wooden house, a cabin, or a normal, a normal house, and such. And that would be what will get passed here, I guess. <clears throat> or like the the methods are the same rather for each house, but the product is different. There we go. <clears throat> for example, imagine a builder that builds everything from wood and glass. A second one that builds everything with stone and iron. Iron? Iron. I think it's iron. And a third one that uses gold and diamonds. By calling the same set of steps, you get a regular house from the first builder. There we go. So all the steps and methods are the same, but the products or the results are different. Okay. However, this would only work if the client code that calls the building steps is able to interact with builders using a common interface. Okay. No, we have a, a class that we can do for the builders, and that will be the director. So this will be like another abstraction layer from the builder so that the client code, or rather so that we don't have to call the builder class inside the client code, and the director will do that for us. Wherein the director will um, do the execution of steps for us or for the client. Let's see. We can go further and and extract a series of calls to the builder steps you use to construct a product into a separate class called director. The director class defines the order in which to execute the building steps, while the builder provides the implementation for the steps. There we go. So the director will execute the, uh, the given steps or the implemented steps inside the builder, and the builder will implement those methods or steps. Okay. It's not really necessary because again we can call it inside the client. There we go. But it's good to have a builder based on what is said here to have, for example, different kinds of conditions and you know it's another abstraction layer that will speed up your development process when your um application like an editor becomes bigger. There we go. Reus um, reusability. So in this case, abstraction, I think. Yeah. And once again here, hide. So that's abstraction. I keep repeating myself, but yeah. The details of product construction from the client code. The client only needs to associate a builder with a director, launch the construction with a director, and get the result from the builder. So let's see the example on the left. Let's see the director. We have the editor instance, which is the builder. We set the editor, so that is what's going to be passed from the client, and that is what we see on the right. Um, there we go. The client only needs to associate a builder. So in here, the director, we need an editor instance or a builder editor. 
and that is what's going to be passed from the client here. And now, when it's passed, we'll just set it. We set, we just set this instance or property private editor because we cannot access it on the client. For example, um, here or other uh, here, we can access the property. So if I just try that, if it's declared private, we don't see it anymore. Right? So we just set it to that. And if it doesn't exist, of course, we don't do anything. Okay. So, let's see here. We declare a new ed director and we make a new editor builder in the client. And of course, we can also make different kinds of editor for the client and such. Okay, and we set the editor and we just do some kind of simple operations like console logging. So, let's see this in action. Run the script, or rather, we run this file and wait for it to finish. Okay, JavaScript is very slow, but all right. <laughs> there we go. This is the output. Creating a new editor, which is this line here, and the console log here, which is from this one. Let's try to follow this control click. Here we go, and create. And here we go. We pushed it there. And what was done? And after creating it, we're pushing the item, page text. We got the root here and here, okay, and reset it. That means the next call for the get root or the next call for the builder, which is down here at the second, will be a new instance of that, okay. Then after calling that, since we're we are returning the um, where is it? We are returning the result, which is the root. We would get access to the methods of the root, which is list plugins or down here as we saw list plugins. So that's method chaining again, uh, another um, concept in programming or yeah, coding. So to method chain, you just need to return the instance of a specific class. Okay. <clears throat> and here we're just console logging the plugins and the config, and that's what we see down here. So since we declared it to have rich text, okay, in here, we set the rich text to true. And down here on the second one, a new instance would be, or a new editor will have the second plugin. Since we push that inside the array of plugins, and the configuration would be this right here. Rich text is false because it's not rich text, and a second plugin too because we added a second plugin. And for the last one, we wanted to add both rich text and second plugin. Again, there's probably a better way to do this, just not combine it. I'm not sure, but yeah. And that's why, as you can see on the third line, we have both the rich text and the second plugin. Okay. So let's move on to the um, illustration on the right and actually see how it works based on the example. So let's say we are trying... No, I think there's something better here. Down here. There we go. Here we go. So let's say we're trying to make a car. Okay, now the client will call the director. Okay, director, try to build me something. So we'll pass on the car builder here. And we have two kinds of cars. Only one for SUV, and that will be one for sports car. And for those methods, we have the same methods as well. We'll call the builder to build us a car right here. Okay. So the reset will make a new instance of a car, and then it says yada yada. So this is the method that was called. We res um we reset yeah. set seats the same and set engine, okay. And if it's a sport car, then we'll set the um engine to be of course equal to um a sports car engine or a sports engine. So the steps are the same, but the only difference is the sports engine. And of course, we can also change the seats, but all in all, it's still the same process. Of course, that trip computer and set GPS. And for the manual as well, we have the same, um, what they call this, the same processes or construction methods. <clears throat> so we can reuse it again and again and again, just providing a different kind of product or outcome. There we go. A car is a complex object that can be constructed in a hundred different ways. 
Instead of bluting the car class with a huge constructor, we extracted the car assembly code into a separate car builder class, which is what we see here. This class has a set of methods for configuring various parts of a car. So we have the engine. So what type of engine do we need? There we go. Based on the past on engine, then, you know, we do something with it. That's the GPS and yada yada. If the client code needs to assemble a special fine-tuned model of a car, it can work with the builder directly. Okay? On the other hand, the client can delegate the assembly to the director class, which knows how to use a builder to construct several of the most popular models of cars, which is what we have in this class here. So the client can either call the car builder, so we'll just say, okay, new car, build me this. So we set the seats, engine, and such. And while with the director, we can, um, excuse me, instantiate or make methods for each of them. And this is an obstruction layer where the client will just call make SUV. And the director will know instantly, instantly, okay, I cannot flick today. <laughs> okay. Instantly that, okay, we want to, we want this to be an SUV. So we pass that here. And for a sports car, we pass that here. So the engine would be a sports engine. Okay. Meanwhile, here on the client, that we need to do more and more um, if statements, which statements, etc. Meanwhile, in the director, we can do that inside the director. And thus, we'll have a cleaner client. Okay. I'd be shocked, but every car needs a manual. Seriously, who reads them? I don't. <laughs> the manual des describes, <coughs> excuse me. Every feature of the car, so the details in the manuals vary across the different models. That's why it makes sense to reuse an existing construction process for both real cars and their respective manuals. There we go. So it's the same manual format, but, but we have different type words depending on the type of car. There we go. Of course, the manual is not the same as the car, so... You know, different class for it. And the methods should be the same as well, just to make, make life easier, I guess. And for example, here, set engine, set engine. So in the car, we'll make an engine. Well, whilst in the manual, we'll make a description for that engine that is being made. Okay. The final part is fetching the resulting object. A metal core and a paper manual, although related, are still very different things. We can't place a method for fetching results in the director without coupling the director to concrete plot of classes. Hence, we obtain the result of the construction from the builder which performed the job. So here what this means is that we cannot fetch the results from the director itself unless we combine the director directly with the product classes, or in this means the car and such. And if we do that, things will just get um, messy. I mean, instead, we can have a method inside each builder to get, well, the result. And the director will just call that. Okay, get the result of this build. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, declare the methods. Implement builder for car. Okay, the same, the same. Okay, here we go. We got, we got the get product. <laughs> and you can see that how messy this will be in the director. So for each, like, we will need to declare different properties inside the director. For example, sports car and SUV, etc. And we'll call the reset. Or we'll call a new instance of that every time and yada yada. <coughs> Meanwhile, here we can just have a single one. Okay, so the same one, and there we go. Excuse me. Okay, okay, get product. While we build it, construct here. Okay, builder. So. In here, we constructed the sports car. We will reset it. That will be the builder that was passed here. So, 
will call this the director will call it so up here we have a car builder right this will be called the reset oh up here actually so almost the same but yeah so reset new core and then after that reset seats all right oh yeah okay and use force engine and blah, yeah yeah then after that we just get the product which means that we get the car itself and there will be a new instance for the build um car <clears throat> okay and in here got another instance for builder but this time it's for a manual and then the director will pass it will pass that on and we will have this methods again which is the same as the car builder but in this case it's for a manual see how handy it is we just reuse this and it will be a different builder this time but these methods are the same but the product is different okay and for the manual, we'll just get the product from this builder right here, which is, which was constructed in this code. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that's it for the builder pattern. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, let's get to the last um creational design pattern. <clears throat> so prototype is pretty much cloning an object or an item without you referencing to the cloned or to the object that was cloned. Because if <clears throat> if we have for example a shallow copy, so we have object. Oh world and if we try to say const object 2 is equals to object and we said like object 2 dot hello equals to uh -huh. then we would have <laughs> mm -hmm. Then we would have manipulated or changed the property of this object here. Not just this object right here. There we go. Instead of world, we have haha. Well, of course, one solution to this problem <clears throat> is to have um, the spread operator. Okay. So if we try that out, <clears throat> we will get mm -hmm, very slow. There we go. Haha. <laughs> now, and the world is unaffected. But I think if I'm remembering correctly, <clears throat> so the object two would have haha <laughs> for the hello property. But if we did this, if I'm not mistaken, the object two will now have world. <clears throat> I think. Let's see. Uh huh. I think I guess I'm wrong. So what the shallow? What is a shallow copy then? Interesting. Okay. Anyway. So I guess we can do it this way with spread operator. We're in. We're creating a new instance of this object or whatever object that we are spreading. <clears throat> so that means this is now unrelated to this one. Yeah. Somewhat like that. Because if you noticed, even if you change the property of this object here, or the value, this is unaffected and that's the same for this one. <clears throat> so I guess we can use um, the spread operator. Okay, interesting. <clears throat> but yeah, so what is the prototype? Well, it's pretty much just copying an object without it being dependent on that object, I think. Okay, let's see. 
prototype is creation of design pattern that lets you copy existing objects without making your code dependent on their classes. So you don't depend on what kind of class it is, okay? Say you have an object and you want to create an exact copy of it. How would you do it? Well, first, you have to create a new object of the same class. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so you have to go through all of the fields of the original object and copy their values over to the new object. So that would be something like, in here, for example, we can say rectangle 2 is equals to something like this. X would be rectangle dot X and such. Okay. So I guess that's what they're trying to say here. Let's see. But there's a catch. Not all objects can be copied. Okay. Because that's because we have the private property. All right. So let's try it out. So maybe we can have the private property. So I guess we can have the private property created. There we go. And this will be new date. Like so. Oh, oops. This will be time example one or zero I guess and then we just don't need to pass it pass it excuse me so I guess every time we create a new clone you can say this dot time this one okay so let's try this out <coughs> So this should give us with 0, 1, 2 for each creation of the rectangle. Oh, uh -huh. we did not get it. Interesting. So returning this, which has the reference this right here. Okay, now I'm confused. <laughs> ah, it's because we are not Oh, so this that created on super source. Mm. Okay, so is it because we're not doing this here? Okay, that's kind of weird. Oh, huh, see, because we didn't declare the private property here. Every time we clone it, hmm. we're turning the instance of this object or the shape, which is what we have here. But this is a different method. But if we try doing it with a shape. Then this should have that incrementation, right? Or this should have the time incremented. Yeah. There we go. But this one have zero. Okay, that's interesting. So in here we clone the rectangle. So when we called it, we changed this one to zero okay oh all right okay now i need to play with this a lot more when it comes to having private properties Mm -hmm, yeah, there we go. So this is what we're trying to do. We're in its private, and like we can have this created on the clone it. 
I mean, we are cloning it, but we just messed it. It just ruined everything. Was just ruined. This is a bug. Yeah. <laughs> so when we clone it, we get a new instance or a a, the same instance rather. And then we just change this. So now we're trying to clone rectangle two. We should turn return this here. Plus one. Let's see. So for one call of clone, we get zero. That should be zero. And then one on the next call. Okay. Interesting. So zero, zero. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, let's make some clones. Okay. So the wonder layer is good, right? Without this created on shenanigans. Let's see. For copying the original object's data to the clone, this method may also handle some edge cases. Find recursive dependencies, etc. Okay, here. Clone returns the shape. Okay, so we'll just return this. But how about the private properties? This. Then we would still get it, right? Yeah. So if we try that, we would get zero all the time. Yeah, there we go. Okay, but of course we cannot access that, like so, outside of the class. <clears throat> mm. Okay, so this is what I did, pretty much. Of course this is not included. And if you noticed, even if we um, declare the property for this, this is unaffected as well. Okay, I need to play around with that more actually. That's, pr that's pretty much the gist of prototyping, you just copy it. Cloning. Okay. respective objects so in this case we have a different way to initialize the rectangle wherein we have additional width and height hmm. for it can be used there are several common ways to configure this class and this code is scattered through your app each of the application create several subclasses and put very every common configuration code into their constructors. <clears throat> so the application problem, but now you have lots of dummy subclasses. And if you use the set of pre-built objects, there we go, the pre-built object would be the rectangle or in here. Okay. Instead of instantiating a subclass that matches some configuration. Ah, okay. I see. So, for example, we want a shape. Then we, after that, we actually want to change the shape to a different one, right? Yeah. Mm hmm So, we just clone it, but with, whilst not affecting this guy. Yeah, here we go. Create the prototype interfa interface and declare the clone method in it. Okay, we did that. Or just add a method to all classes of an existing class hierarchy. So that would be here. <coughs> okay. A prototype class must define the alternative constructor that accepts an object of that class as an argument. 
the constructor must copy the values of all fields defined in the class from the past object into the newly created instance. <clears throat> okay, so I think what's what's happening earlier with the um, created on is that we copied it. So when we copied it, the value of the created on in the time was incremented, and then we returned the instance of that. All right, so that means the thing that we returned turned here in the clone would also have had its created on incremented <clears throat> all right meanwhile from the earlier one <clears throat> or rather from the call here we got the time of zero because the value of the time created on in the rectangle two is actually zero Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would be the same as calling here, you see. So if we tried to copy the rectangle 3, then that means we would get a time of 1. So 0 plus 1. And the rectangle 4 as well, in that case. Okay. <clears throat> if you're changing a subclass, you must call the parent constructor to let the superclass handle the cloning of its private uh, fields. <clears throat> okay. If your programming language doesn't support method overloading, you won't be able to create a separate prototype constructor. Thus, copying the object's data into the newly created clone will have to be performed within the clone method. Still, having this code in a regular constructor is safer because the resulting object is returned fully configured, configured right after you call the new operator. Running a new operator with a prototypical version of the constructor. Okay. Can we create a centralized prototype registry? After the appropriate prototype is found. Hmm. Let's try to see the example they give. Okay, primitive is the type of value, I guess, or what kind of value there is. Component is an object, and a reference to that would be a reference to the prototype itself. Okay. Define <coughs> food. New date into the component and a circular reference. So the P1 will reference itself, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so now it's, it's a circular, that's just like in a double length list, it's circular reference. So we will clone the P2 or the P1 from the P2. Check if its primitive values are the same. Okay. <laughs> Your examples are very good. <laughs> so that means this P2 should now point to P1 or to whatever P1 is pointing to, which is what P1. But in this case, P2 is a copy of P1. And they should still have the same values, I guess. Because it's a copy. Alright. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, the clone we will create. So it's a inbuilt um, method in JavaScript. The object. Um, class in JavaScript is inbuilt, so we create. So let's see. There we go. So we'll create an object equal to this, so the class, okay, and the component for that. So let's try it out, actually. Oh, okay. 
okay this is that all right balloon huh interesting why we're we getting any I love Okay. Okay. So why are we getting the us oh, because it's type of any uh okay prototype <clears throat> oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. So a new prototype. Okay, this is taking longer than I expected it to take. Okay, this will just go in an endless circle uh, or endless parameter. So I guess we should declare this graph. Oh, what? Okay. Oh, wait, I think it should be like this. There. Right. Ah, there we go. Okay. Let's show, see that. Yeah, I need to play around with this more. Mm. Prototype. So here we go. Circular, we're pointing to the same item. Okay, here we get some, we get the ball. Oh wait, so P one that glow. So we should be uh, we should have access to the X, not just the item.
and be like this on that color equals color clone that um yeah i think that's it let's see <clears throat> okay hmm so what did we miss here this time oh nothing pretty much we just moved the properties okay All right. Try to move this up to the edge. Try that again. <clears throat> okay. So now this reference has to run defined because we don't we didn't fully copy this, right? Hmm. Let's see, how can we know that it's the same? Uh, it's a glar. Let's see, console.log. Oh, of course it will be different. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, I think I should really play this around with this more because this should actually be 200 if we changed it or rather yeah i think that's correct that it's not 200 because we didn't really change the items um value yeah so there's something wrong with what we made that's for sure okay anyway that's all for now i will play around with this more because this is very intriguing. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Happy learning and good luck on your development journey. Thank you for watching very, very much. And I think I'll discuss with this some more later on. Of course, I'll still upload this video. So anyway, hit the like and subscribe if you want. And thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs> Have a good day.